Good morning all, so I am just off to take some grass samples because this year I have been asked by my local vet to take samples for facial eczema readings. So every area around here sort of does one and then it goes out in a text. I'm just having a little look. Need to choose four representative paddocks, one flat paddock, hilly, sheltered and north facing. Got a few in mind. They've left me with instructions, but pretty much what you do is just take 10 samples from each paddock, put it in these brown paper bags, which they have supplied. So I need four because they go in different bags. Even left me with some scissors. Thanks, Kylie. It says to cut the grass roughly about a centimeter above ground level. Easy as. This one will do is my flat paddock. It does look like there's a bit of a hill there, but it's flat enough. Something like that. That's my one. Now I've just got to get nine more and walk from corner to corner. There's my samples. Now I just need to write on here. I probably should have done it. It was flat. This is the dump paddock. And there's my hilly paddock, which is also north facing, but I don't think I'll have too much of a problem because most of our paddocks really do face the north. But if you're in the northern hemisphere, it's the total opposite to what we are down here. So our north facing hills see a lot more sunlight than the south facing ones do, and they're a lot more productive. It's not so bad when you're in country like this, but when you get into the steepest stuff, a lot of the south facing country here is sort of planted in pine trees because there's quite a noticeable difference in uh, production. There's my sheltered one and my last one down the bottom here. So I've picked one that's right up the top, this one which is right down the bottom, one that's sort of over there and then the other one was down here. So they're all at sort of different heights on our farm. Not that it really matters I guess but I was told that these lower lying paddocks down here probably don't have the same spore count as the ones up the top there but it'll be interesting to see if I get the results. It's your typical ryegrass plant and the spore count is higher or the spores for facial eczema is more down towards the base of the plant so it's not really at the top it lives down the bottom here and you get a lot worse in the summer because it dries out and the pasture level sort of drop or decrease so the cows are chewing down a lot more so their noses and or well, I guess they're taking more intake from sort of the base of the plant and that's where they can pick it up. All done, so now we'll go and put these in the fridge. Holly's going to drop them off to the vet later when she goes and gets the kids from daycare. Facial eczema is definitely one of the bigger problems we have here in the Waikato, especially in the summer because we tend to dry out and the spore counts go up. But it was quite interesting, I was speaking to an old guy a couple of years ago I was playing golf with. He was probably 85 then. And he said when he was shear milking down when he was younger in Taranaki, like in his 20s, he was milking 200 cows and one summer he had it real bad and he lost about 100 of them. So it is pretty deadly, but that was before that they knew zinc was the solution to uh, solving it or preventing it, I, I should maybe say. But we take measures against it, so we've already started putting zinc in the drench and I also put it in the mixer wagon for the cows. Did that probably about a couple of weeks ago. This is the first reading of the spore counts that'll go out, so every week I've got to do them and hand them in before Wednesday, and then we get a text on Thursday or Friday saying what areas are. So it is quite interesting, but because it's been so wet, they haven't really worried about it because the risk hasn't been quite high. But it is starting to get pretty nice and hot and sunny, so start getting some readings in now. Now it's time to go and pick up some bales, got the grabs on. Dad took the mower off this tractor before. Hopefully I've put the perfect blue for bottom.
that paddock's all done. Now just starting on here, but there's only about three trailer loads in here, so it's not too bad. Paul's come down to give us a hand, he's driving that tractor. Dad's over there in that one, and it is so handy having two trailers, it just speeds things up heaps. A few more bales on the line. Thought I might as well move these lucerne bales, get them out of the way, and the cows can chew that corner out. Come on! Cocks on, that's good. Cows are drinking a lot of water at the moment. It's pretty hot, although it has clouded over this afternoon, which is really nice because it's brought that temperature down quite a bit. It was pretty hot this morning and it definitely sort of feels like summer now, but the strange thing is it kind of feels like December, not January, so it is a good thing, but man, yeah, when that sun's out, oh, she's scorching. Just setting the paddock up for the cows tomorrow morning, but look at how good this grass is. Beautiful quality. Young herds just come off the chicory, so they're going into a grass paddock tonight, and then they're gonna go into that silage paddock in the morning just to clean it up. They're cleaning it up real good now, like pretty happy with that. Actually, I think Dad's left the gate, which is in this bottom corner down here, open, so they can just go in between that paddock and the silage one. Go on, Ed. Fast forward a couple of days and the results are back. And it's pretty interesting because they are a little bit varied to the paddock I did over there. That measured 6,000. This hilly north facing paddock was 20,000. Number five down there was zero. And the big flat one on the peak down there was 10,000. So it's not too bad at the moment. Dad said in the past it has gotten up into the millions before. So that is really high. But I have just bought the calves in. I've just given them a quick worm drench while they're in the yard and I'm just gonna give them a quick zinc drench now. This is how the zinc comes, just in a powder like this. So I've put it in the bucket here, put some water in, give it in a stir and let it set so all the sediment should drop to the bottom and what I've got now is just a sort of zincy water. And now, put it in the drench pack. And then just whatever's left in here, I'll put in the drench. Probably a little bit uncommon to see people drenching their young stock like that for zinc. Most people use capsules and they're about this big, they put them down their throat, they just sit in their stomach and they sort of dissolve. Over about six to eight weeks I think you get with them. And the ones down at young stock, they will get that. Merv will put them in when we, or when the spore counts get up a little bit more. 
and you might have to do them twice in a summer. Most times we can sort of get away with it um, only once, but sometimes you might have to do them twice. I just drench the calves that are here on farm like that, so I drench them once a week, and it sort of gets them used to it because they are gonna be getting drenched every day once they start milking, and also it sort of gets them a little bit friendly because I'm handling them around the head quite a bit. It's almost one o'clock and it is stinking hot today. It's actually quite nice. There is a little bit of a breeze, but that will pretty much wrap it up for this video. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up like always. And apart from that, see you next time.